Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery, Part 236. <clears throat> our title today is Twilight for Humanity, Part 3. We've been talking about the destruction that's going to come on the human race. <coughs> we want to pursue this into a, uh, <coughs> a greater comprehension of um, what the Bible has to say about it. Scripture teaches that judgment will fall on the human race, decimating it, and a damaged civilization on the earth's surface. Jeremiah 25, verses 30 to 33. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation, and shall give a shout, as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. This includes the whole human race. A noise or a sound shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. The word plead there means judge. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. <coughs> and the slain of the Lord shall be in that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. In addition to this, the scripture is giving us the understanding that all human governments are going to fall. The nation state as we know it will cease to exist. Jeremiah 25 verse 26. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, the king of Shishak shall drink after them. So all human order, government authority is going to collapse as a result of a judgment. Let me ask a question here, Richard. Mm -hmm. So we see in the previous verses, uh, 19 through 25, that this appears to be a localized judgment of nations, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When does that happen in relation to what we've just read? Let's talk about <clears throat> basically back in the time of um, ancient Israel. Well, they go into captivity, there'll okay. be judgments come upon them, judgments come on the nations around them. Okay. It's a continuous thing until it went global. So, would you describe that as duality? Duality? Mm. In that the ancient has already happened, historic, and this uh, prophecy has not yet happened, future. I would say it's a progression of a singularity. Okay, okay. Judgment cup. All right. <coughs> it starts so it local, starts with way back, and then way it's back going down. to... But this is the first time we're seeing global in verse 30. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> now we see in other scriptures a greater picture of this devastation. Turn to Jeremiah 4, verse 23 to 26. I beheld the earth, the planet, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all 
the cities thereof were broken down at the presence <coughs> of the Lord and by his fierce anger. So, <coughs> the scriptures consistently letting us know this is global. This is going to engulf the whole earth and everything on its surface. <coughs> Scripture teaches the earth will be shaken to its core and the human race scattered upon it. Isaiah 24, verse 16. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. What does this mean? This means there's no distinction in society anymore. You have no levels, you have no... Um, Hierarchy? <clears throat> class. Okay. Everything has been taken from everybody. Everybody is trying to survive at this point because society has basically been uh, devastated. There's no order any longer in the human society. It goes on. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. This is Elohim. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the earth do languish. All the pride and uh, the pomp and uh, <coughs> the majesty of people <laughs> parading up and down, thinking that they are really something, that's all going to be wiped out. Man is going to be humble to a point where he never believed he could experience that type of humility. Yes. So it sounds as if there is no leadership. Everybody is fending for himself. That no human leadership. Yeah, everything is devastating. Does this imply that those who were haughty and once had <laughs> stupendous amounts compared to other people no longer have anything? That's right. Everyone's got exactly the same. Nothing. Mm. Yeah, there's no society here to have anything with. So the value, there is no value in anything. Right. Which is why they threw their, their silver and gold into the streets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on. <clears throat> the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate, therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Now it talks about the covenant, and they highly devastated it. We have to understand what the covenant is, so turn to Genesis, <coughs> the sixth chapter. Verses 17 to 18. <clears throat> His white tree age talking to Noah prior to the flood. And behold, I, even I, do bring a full of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. <coughs> now, <coughs> you find out the covenant relationship in uh, <coughs> the ninth chapter. Verses 1 to 3. This is after the flood.
And God bless Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. <clears throat> Basically, <clears throat> what it's saying is, um, where replenish there comes from a Hebrew term, male, which means to fill up, to consecrate. In other words, the service world is given back to the, is given to the human race to develop, cultivate, and uh, <clears throat> bring to fruition. <clears throat> and then he goes on. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as green herb have I given you all things. So basically, the human race has been given the surface world to cultivate. Well, what they find, <clears throat> what has happened by the time of the judgment, is what they've been given has been polluted in every aspect. Torn down, devastated, distorted, destroyed. <clears throat> And this is what man does. He goes about, instead of making things better, he makes them worse. They've already poisoned the food, the air, and the water <clears throat> to the point where sickness is rampant. They're starting diseases. They're doing things <clears throat> that take the natural order and distort it and pollute it. And uh, <clears throat> the streams and the soil and the air and everything is going to wind up in a state of devastation. Should we understand that prior to the flood, everybody was a vegan? Well, you wouldn't say a vegan because. Um, did, they, could, did they eat meat? No. Right. No, they didn't eat anything basically other than the fruits. Okay, but of that the trees. was as meat to them. Yes, mm. and it was, it was a pure form of meat. It's not like a juicy. Um, apple that you see today the right, fruits right. that grew at that time were radically different sure. they even had uh, um, they had uh, remnants of them by the time of the Israelite progression into the promised land okay. they were talking about grapes the size of um, basketballs and stuff that was luscious right so when um, Noah and his family step into this new reality mm -hmm. The meat that they're eating from that point on, I, I guess it, it didn't you know, mean anything, didn't praise them in any way, because they're in a new reality. Well, from that point on, the meat that was given to them was animal meat. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Previously, they didn't eat animal exactly. meat. Now they're eating animal because meat. Because everything is radically changed. Okay. But the, 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 the thrust of the question is, as they step into this new reality where they now eat animal meat, this had no psychological effect on them, I presume. No. Okay. No. Uh, because they understood it was wholesome. Okay. They had rigid standards in which certain things you didn't, you didn't, you didn't eat blood. You didn't kill something <clears throat> and then leave it. You you ate it fresh. Right. And uh, yeah, it was all all, all healthy. <clears throat> Where did cooking it come into? Uh, I believe as a result when you're giving uh, you know when you give the showbread or whatever to the you know, the sacrifice yeah that would be consecrated by being burnt I would imagine I don't know I don't know Mr. Yeah. Uh, a, a burnt offering was cooked boiled and then the meat was uh, sectioned and <clears throat> given to the priest to eat right well this took place at the same time as the ordinance of eating meat the thing of it is, is from not eating meat and then all of a sudden killing animals, blood and all this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and well, yeah, we're going to eat that. It's like, well, I don't, what a transition, Mr. Jones. I can't even imagine it. I have to understand it's a different reality. Yeah. <clears throat> the scripture is saying <clears throat> this is a fallen, still a fallen reality. Yeah, why is this? Is you're evil. Now the animals are not going to have any communication with you. So everything now, instead of what it was before, to survive in this system, you have survival of the fittest in the animal kingdom and in the human kingdom. The human kingdom is dependent upon the animal kingdom for its survival. This is the law of the new state of existence. So they just f fell right into it. They didn't feel sensitive about it. Sure. <clears throat> 
uh, they were killing each other. He has to make at the same time he gives them this rigid uh, uh, capacity. He's passed a law about shedding the blood of an animal, a person, and what the result of that would be because he's dealing with beings that are now totally corrupted. The humans are corrupted, the animal kingdom is corrupted. So was it before the law? The law came after? This is the law. Okay. Well, see, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. You, you, you kill this, you, you have to pay with another like-minded. This is, this is the new statute. Before it was different. It didn't have the law. You had basically a form of grace. Hmm. Men lived in harmony with the animals. The earth was a paradise. You didn't have to plant anything. All you had to do was till the soil and it would grow. Totally different arrangement. Peter talks about that in uh, Second Peter. He said the world that then was, was destroyed. Replaced by this crude arrangement that you have now. That's the best that YHPH could do. But let's go on. So we see the judgment that's coming on the earth is due to the fact that man has corrupted the covenant relation that was given to him. And that causes a response in which he's taken the authority that he was given is taken away from him and given to others at this point. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the judgment will disinherit the human race and give it back to the ancient races that once dominated it. Turn to Daniel 7, verse 23. <clears throat> he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse. From all kingdoms. What we had, as you had commented on, from that time forward is a human dominated system on the surface world of human kingdoms. This kingdom is going to, not, is going to be a kingdom of non human intelligences. So they're going to bring in the conditions in which they survive, they thrive, and they go on, and they're going to basically supplant this current order with their own order. Fourth kingdom upon the earth shall be diverse, altered from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So man is going to experience tremendous judgment that destroys his civilization, and on top of that, the fourth empire is going to take the earth and section it and totally eradicate any vestige of the human order by supplanting it with its own order. Daniel 2, verses 40 to 43. Again, talking about the fourth empire, the fourth kingdom. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, part of iron, kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Notice what it says in verse 44. In the days of these kings 
shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and shall stand forever so you have the fourth empire you have the gold the silver the brass and the human the clay is what's going to be <clears throat> resident on the earth at this point human race is going to be a vassal shadow of what it once was residing under the influence of the kings of the Iron Empire and the other nations. They will never again have self-rule. They will be so from a mindset ruled over subjected to superior intelligences that they won't want to have their own independent role because their basic devotion, the basic concept will be to the gods right. that dominate them. Even to a point, turn to Revelation, the ninth chapter, verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, demons, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Their minds are going to be so distorted and corrupted, they're going to be worshiping sentient beings, they're going to be worshiping the representations of these beings and not for the most part even be able to differentiate between the two. And a plague, a judgment from God Almighty will not be able to change their mind. They'll die before they'll stop the uh, uh, progression of worshiping these beings because their mind at this point is so distorted that they relish the connection that they have with these beings. Are they even able to be aware that they can stop it? Sure. It says that they won't stop okay. it. Point of death. You get a third of the human race wiped out and the rest refuse knowing what happened to these others. They don't fear God at all. They have a devotion unbroken with these demon beings that they worship. This is talking about the whole human race. Mm. Now, what we find here The exception to the rule, of course, has to do with those that are going to be gathered. We want to talk a little bit about the gathering, which is what the Bible emphasizes. It's not talking about second coming, it's not talking about the rapture, it's talking about the gathering. Scripture teaches all who are part of the gathering will escape all the calamities that will fall on the human race. John, 11th chapter, verse 51 to 52. Gospel of John, 11th chapter, 51 to 52. <clears throat> High priest makes a prophecy about Jesus dying for the nation. The scripture is illumination upon the prophecy. 51, he's, and he spake, this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, the Jewish nation. And not for that nation only, but that he should gather gather, gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So we find this is not referring to the 12 tribes of Israel. This is referring to the people of God beyond Israel are going to be gathered together. 
how do we know that this is not YHVH and his gathering versus the church and Elohim's gathering? Because it's Jesus. There's a point in which Jesus is going to gather his people. That's New Covenant. Can't be anything to do with YHVH. Ephesians, first chapter, verses 9 to 10. Now we find this is where wisdom comes into play. That saint which is in tune with the Holy Spirit will comprehend the will of God, the purpose of God, through the word of God. That's what it says. Having, past tense, made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that, that, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he, the Father, might gather together in one all things in Christ, the Son, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Now turn to Second Thessalonians, second chapter. Verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. He's going to come. He's going to gather. He said in himself, of the sheep I have, them I must bring, and it will be one fold. He says it over, over, and over again, but mainline denominational teaching just totally overlooks that, focusing on the rapture and the second coming. There's going to be a rapture, it's going to be a second coming, but God's plan illustrates the timing of it. Now, Turn to Luke, the 21st chapter. We're going to close with verse 35 to 36. Luke 21, 35 to 36. Actually, we'll do 34 to 36 because this includes the judgment. It includes the gathering. The whole thing. And a summation. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares, cares, cares of this life. That's what's going to be the snare for most Christians. Their focus, their concern on their life the things happening in their own local situation and not having a giving a finig about what's going on around them or the importance of God, God's schedule, or taking time to survey what the scripture is saying, having an ear to hear, even though they have the Holy Spirit in them, they're going to be motivated to sacrifice to find out what needs to be done. They're going to be in this group. <clears throat> that your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. This thing is going to be global. It's going to happen in one day. You're going to hear the Lord's voice be resonant, resonating throughout the earth. And two responses. Those that are prepared are going to rejoice. Those that aren't are going to be in terror. And he goes on. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy 
to escape all, A-L-L, -L, all these things. Everything we talked about dealing with the judgment that's going to fall on the world, the collapse of society, the collapse of the systems of surviving in society, that individual is going to escape all that. Why? Because he's going to be part of the gathering. All these things that should come to pass and to stand and to stand. This is not the rapture. It's not the second coming. To stand before the Son of Man. Now in the lessons that we're going to have Tuesday, I'm going to take off on this and show you what happens when he comes and what he's going to do. This is basically what the scripture is saying. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to force this down anybody's throat. And take it or leave it. Do what you want to do with it. But this is uh, uh, the way I see scripture. And this is what I'm preparing my life, my family for.